Hey there, Mission Control. Thanks for joining us again. We're continuing our series on the system overview. And today, I'm standing in a different place other than HAB1. And really, the reason I want to do that is just talk about another exciting piece of the digester uh, technology that we're looking at. And that, I got this little, little post right here. This post got a cap on it, and it runs all the way to HAB1. Propane tank pipe coming out of the ground. What could it mean? Let's talk about it. If you've been following us uh, for the last year, you know uh, I just built this wood shed and we actually heat our house with wood as we live kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's the best option for you, most sustainable option, uh, renewable option. So uh, put in this wood shed and we heat everything, but our house has other ways of being heated. It, uh, it has floors in it, radiant floors, that are connected to a propane burner. And it has a uh, water heater, not a hot water heater. Huh? I learned. <laughs> Those of you who've been following around, you, you know who you are. You know, you know why I'm saying that. Anyway, uh, propane uh, water heater, propane uh, floor heater, and uh, propane uh, cooktop. All those things could be converted to runoff of methane. That pipe, if you haven't put it together yet, is a methane supply line coming from the building. There's another one out at the barn actually as well coming up uh, that we can connect into for uh, multiple different purposes. One of the original ideas I had with the digester uh, is I could actually produce enough methane uh, to convert my truck over and actually drive to work every day. It would produce enough methane so I could drive back and forth to work every day and not have to ever buy gasoline again. Now, you got to pay some money to do that. It's about $10,000 to get the compressor, uh, the cleaning uh, units that you need to scrub the fuel, as well as convert your vehicle over. But it's all technology that exists today. You can get it. Uh, I'm hoping maybe in the future I can come back to that. But for 2018, we're going to focus on just getting the digester up and running so that we can help offset some of the heating costs uh, that we have. So in the house, we have all, all those things, the the... The floor boiler, which we don't turn on, uh, just we use the wood stove. Uh, we have the water heater, which we use. Uh, we actually have two water heaters, one electric, one propane. It's cheaper to use electric here where we live just because of the cost of electricity. We have lots of hydropower. Uh, it's a blessing in that sense. So we, we have two of them. But we could go back to the propane, and it can be converted to runoff of methane. And uh, based on my calculations, we'd probably be able to generate enough methane to, to convert a lot of these things over uh, to run and we can even put like a little stove in our bedroom because it's kind of kind of cold in there a little heater uh, vent free heater that runs off methane as well so this digester technology is really quite phenomenal and I think I think it's what we should really go like why have a septic tank you know if you can have a digester why I mean I want to dig up my septic tank and put in a digester I don't have any money to do that but you know, I don't need to use the digest state from the septic. It can still go into a leach field, just like you normally would. But why would I not capture fuel and use it? And with the human waste, a family of four generates, I mean, that's a lot of fuel that you could use. Um, I, sometimes I just wonder about what we do as a society. It just seems to make no sense. But anyway, there's probably a lawyer involved somewhere in there that makes it to where you can't actually do things that make sense. Uh, I digress. So let's head out to the habitat and talk a little bit more about heating, but I kind of wanted to give you just the, uh, the overview here of why I think this technology is so cool uh, and, and so potentially useful. You know, there's a chance that this year, if we can get it up and running, uh, that we could convert a lot of this stuff over to run off of methane at the house um, and maybe get rid of that propane tank there. Uh, so let's head out to the hab. Let's talk about this some more out there. Sometimes I think scale is important. These are two 600-gallon propane tanks. They last about a month when it's really cold out and there's no sun. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've actually been going through a lot of propane. $1,600 a month, that's what it costs. And uh, our microgreens are making $1,200 right now, so we are a little short. Um, if we were running microgreens all year round last year, 2017, we would have had enough to cover all the cost because uh, you don't heat in the summertime. Uh, but sadly, we weren't up and running until later in the year. So uh, two 600-gallon tanks, though, this is a lot of propane. 
a lot of propane. Look at this. Uh, so why are we talking about that now? Probably pretty obvious, but one of the things that we can do with the digester is offset the heating cost of the building itself, HAB1. So we have the 300,000 BTU heater in there, and uh, propane, what is it, 90,000 BTU per gallon uh, is what it is. So you go through quite a few gallons per hour when that thing's running full speed. Now, uh, our heater in there runs for about 15 minutes at a click, uh, heats up the building, uh, and then turns off and sits for probably 15, 30 minutes. It depends. If it's, it's overcast like today, there's no sun, uh, the building kind of gets cold, but if the sun comes out, the heater doesn't turn on even when it's below freezing outside, which is awesome. Uh, so because we're going through so much propane, it would be really ideal to be able to convert that heater uh, to run off of methane and propane, or maybe just have a second heater in there uh, that's just burning off the methane from the digester. So, uh, in fact, I need to check and see where we're at. I hate doing this. <gasps> yeah. Every time I have to look at that, it makes me not feel good. <laughs> Can you hear it? Oh, wait. Cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. Let's go inside where it's uh, a lot warmer and talk about this some more. Okay, so let's cut right to the chase. There it is, the beast, the dragon. I think I like calling it the dragon. That's a pretty cool name. Intimidating, scary, beautiful, all at the same time. So 300,000 BTU per hour if it's running full. Propane has, I think it's 90,000 BTU per gallon and methane is less than that. I think it's like 45,000 or 50,000 BTU per gallon. So you're gonna need a lot more methane than probably what we can generate with just a single digester. The good news is we bought the molds to the system. So in HAB2 or even just on our own, um, we have two options really. Like we could even um, put in essentially a separate, uh, a separate septic system and divert our household septic into a digester system where we could actually harvest the methane off of it. And uh, that'd be great. <laughs> that would work, that would be awesome. Uh, we could also, uh, in HAB2, install a second full-size digester system like the one we have. Now HAB2, we wanna start getting smaller and smaller, so that's probably not gonna happen in HAB2. Um, so we might just end up having to put a second one in, period, because we generate a lot of manure with the, the animals, so we could actually recycle it uh, and help offset the cost of this bad boy. I guess that's pretty much it for this episode. We're back at the digester here. The manifold area and the pipe and everything is all coming up right there that goes up to the house. So one of these days we just simply have to turn a knob and methane will start flowing up there. Right now it's uh, disconnected uh, so that there's no leakage or anything or accidental methane coming out. Um, but I have hooked it up before. Right now the system's empty um, and I, I can't give you a good demonstration. Uh, of it. I used up all the fuel that was in there for uh, running the generator the other day just to run it. Um, pretty cool running it. <laughs> Every time I turn it on, I'm like, poop power, man. It's like, what does that show? Uh, Mel Gibson, Thunderdome, Mad Max, Thunderdome. Remember that? Exactly what we're doing here. Only not horrible, not disgusting, and not trying to kill people or anything like that. So, but pretty much exactly the same thing. <laughs> anyway, Hey, thanks for following along. I hope you can see the potential of the digester. We talked about power last episode. We talked about heat this episode. Uh, this thing can do so much. I'm, I'm really excited about the technology, really excited about kind of really mastering it, getting it figured out. Um, it is waste management, but it can provide so much uh, for us. So I, I think it's a great, great option. And certainly if you think about Mars, you know, again, how can thinking about Mars help us? Well, where are you gonna get all your heat from up there? electricity, nuclear power. Well, if you did something like this, I mean, every little bit helps, right? Every little bit helps. So uh, this is a great thing, I think, for people living in the northern latitudes where you do need to heat uh, the system that we're trying to create. So anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. Don't forget, you could follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Martian, out.